Hey, my name is Eric Todd, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to create a sports uniform phone wallpaper using Adobe Illustrator. The first thing you're going to want to do is create a new Illustrator file. Um, you can go to the mobile tab at the top and pick whatever phone you want. And then you're going to want to open your source images for whatever jersey you're creating, um, and then also any logos that need to go on it. Um, for this project, I only had this NBA logo, which I had previously image traced, and I'll put that in the description so you can have it if you're trying to follow along. Uh, the first thing I did in creating this jersey was start with the simple lines at the bottom. I wanted to make sure I had the colors I needed for the rest of the jersey, and these were the easiest place to start. So... I started by creating three of the same exact size bars, and then I just made the black one smaller because it's a little shorter in the middle. And I probably didn't do this the quickest way possible, but it's pretty simple, easy enough. And to copy those, I just held Alt on PC, I'm not sure what it is on Mac, and click and drag each bar and it'll copy a new version of the object you're selecting. Then I decided to start with the name bar, and there's a couple ways you could do this. Well, you can use this mesh shape sort of thing at the top, or you can use the type on a path tool, which I chose. So here's the mesh warp options. Usually arc is probably what you want if you have a jersey like this, if you're trying to use that, but I think the type on a path tool is way easier. So to use the type on a path tool, you have to draw a shape that you want to type on and then long hold the text tool and click type on a path. And then you click on your shape and you can type whatever you want. And then it'll give you these little endpoints that you have to adjust. And your text will always be between those. And if you left align your text, it'll align with the left one. If you right align the right one, I always put them on each side like this and then center align my text to make sure it's centered obviously um, and then I'll give you text that's around a perfect shape like this circle the next step is choosing a font I just happen to know that this font Baybass is pretty similar if not the exact same one that's on this Miami Heat jersey and then I just went through and adjusted the kerning you can do this holding alt and then using the arrow keys left to make less gap and right makes more gap between the letters. Um, this is a really important, really fast way to adjust the kerning. And then with this type on a path tool, you can still adjust the text size and stuff, which is pretty cool. So after that, I changed the color of it to the pink it needs to be. And then I moved on to the number. And the number is usually the most difficult part of jersey wallpapers like this because the font isn't easy to find. Sometimes you can find a font that's pretty similar and just use that, which makes it a lot easier to make multiple of them because you can just change numbers. But with this font, I decided to just trace it. And this is a little more time intensive, but also you can just trace 0 through 9 and then you have every number you need to make any other number. And you can find images online to trace from. So now I was just making adjustments to sizing and stuff of the numbers and the text. And one thing I did during this was copy the text over to off my screen and create outlines of the text so that circle shape wouldn't be getting in the way. Following that, I created duplicates of the number by copying it and then Command B pastes in the back in the exact same spot. And then I just held Shift and hit left arrow, or right arrow, and down arrow. And I just did the same thing to make the pink one with the black one. And then I was just adjusting each layer to get the spacing right, just making sure I hit each arrow key the same number of times for right and down. And also, I noticed that it's like 3D text and not just a shadow. So to do that, I had to connect each number, so the blue one to the black one, the black one to the pink one. And I used the Shape Builder tool for this. I love using a Shape Builder tool for stuff like this. It's super easy and super quick. You can just make one big shape to delete. It's like making a mask, but permanently deletes everything, which 
is useful because you obviously won't need it later. And then following that, I had to go in and just add little triangles on each endpoint to make the 3D effect. And then eventually I group them all together. So to group those little triangles together with the initial two shape, I selected each triangle and the two shape, and then I went to Pathfinder options, which you might have to enable in your window menu at the top of Illustrator. Um, and then click the top left option and it will merge all the shapes that are connected together into one big shape. That just makes it all one shape again. So now you don't have the two plus the triangles, it's just one big shape. And then I do the same thing for all the pink ones. Um, and then you just send it to the back with... I use control shift and then left bracket to send everything to the back and control shift right bracket to send everything to the front. Um, it just makes everything quicker and easier than right clicking it and hit options, send it back and all that stuff. Um, and then I had to do the same thing for the one obviously, but this time I didn't have to make that little mask delete with the shape builder tool, which made it a lot faster. It was just the three triangles. Alright, so once the number was done getting traced and stuff and I was happy with it, I adjusted the size a little bit and then I adjusted the spacing between them because I noticed on the back of the jersey they're a lot closer than they were on the front, which I traced. Um, and then I was just playing with the size of the name bar and stuff. The proportions don't have to match the jersey exactly because obviously it's a phone wallpaper, it's not, it's going to be a little taller than a jersey. And then I moved on to like the collar design. The fastest way I found to do this was to make one big circle and then hold alt and click and drag to make another one below it and then hit command or control D to repeat the uh, copy of the shape in the exact same spacing. So then I just did that shape builder tool trick again to get rid of the excess circle and so I just have these evenly spaced um, little bars and Obviously the top one's going to be like where the collar dips down. So that's, we have three bars plus that little top section. And I use the shape builder tool to make them all their own individual shape instead of being a little semicircle. Because the shape builder tool just breaks up paths based on where other paths are. So if you just select in the little C shape, then it'll make a new shape with that C instead of having the whole semicircle. Um, and then I was just getting the spacing right again with the black bar being shorter than the pink and blue bars and then using shape builder to get rid of the excess again and then resizing it all making it fit making it look right um, obviously it's not going to be carbon copy of the jersey it's supposed to fit a phone screen um, like I said so following that we're almost done we just have to get this little texture and if you don't want the texture that you don't have to add it this is kind of an optional step but to do this i made i just use little circles and this is where we're going to use that command d or control d excuse me um shortcut after we copy our circle the first spacing i tried i didn't really like um so you'll see that here i use control D and then I realize it's too big and they're too close together so I make it a little smaller make them a little further apart and try again um, and this time I liked it for that control D trick make sure you have the last object you moved selected to or else it won't work I made sure to copy more dots than I needed because the next row or the next column excuse me we're going to move it higher or lower so there's it's not just like a grid it's altering the pattern so you don't want to run out of dots on either side doing that. To make this pattern I copied the column of dots that I just made with the alt click and drag and then I dragged that column down a little bit and then you just do that same trick again hold alt 
click and drag, it'll copy, select it, and then control D all the way across. Again, make sure you go over the border so you have enough. Select them all, group them, and then align them center horizontally, horizontally, vertically, whatever you want. And then I decided I was going to make them all black and change the opacity so I could keep it on the colors as well if I wanted. But I didn't like the look of it as much. So you'll see in the end I eventually decided to take it off of the colors. But this step is getting rid of the dots in that top little crescent kind of thing. I decided to do this by copying the blue shape, pasting it in the back with Control B again, and then adjusting the endpoints so it has that same curve, but now that curve is at the bottom instead of the top, and making the new shape white and bringing it to the front just so it covers up the dots. So then I realized like I didn't really like the dots in front of the colors, so all I did was bring the colors to the front and then I was pretty happy with it. So this was the final result thrown into an iPhone mock-up. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed, I hope this was helpful, and I plan to make more content like this in the future, so if you could hit that subscribe button, I would really appreciate it, and maybe leave some ideas in the comments for what you might like to see. Thanks for watching.